check this out. Notice that the hit comes on the, the actual uh, crash cymbal only on the first beat. It doesn't come around again. How do we do that? I don't know. It, so it's not always doing it. But when you hit the downbeat, because you want to be able to have it go like, oops, let me go here. So that's the whole tune is basically based on me just playing with the drum groove and then throwing in. It's playing over it. So lots of arpeggios if you just want to throw down a drum groove and you don't really you know know how to do that and stuff. There's some other cool things I'll show you in a second. But so that kind of brings me to the next part of this is the performance mode. So you got the voice mode. Everything you've heard so far, it's single voices. Um, you know, playable voices, but we also have this ripping performance mode in here. Performance mode, lots of keyboards have had them. They're the ones where you go like this and it's a full band. So it's like full on. And you see what they're doing, they're following chord fingering. So, so we have a whole bunch of different types of products. We have things that are um, arranger workstations. In fact, the keyboard that's right on the bottom there is a PSR S900. And I saw some guys in here playing it earlier, just playing reggae tunes, you know, and that kind of stuff. We also have um, also the smaller, the one above that is a PSR E413, which is a lower cost one. But they, the portable keyboards have this kind of ability to, you know, to have, oops, let me turn on the arpeggio. And this one uses the VCM. So that kind of stuff. Stop. So, the difference between these two products though, is that this one is instantly recordable into the sequencer and instantly changed. So what we kind of say about these two products, there's a different kind of customer that we have for these products. Customer for something like a, like, um, a PSR S900 is somebody that has a lot of tunes that they just want to play. Stevie Wonder tunes, Joe Bean tunes, whatever. And that's their primary function. Um, a lot of solo acts would use those kind of keyboards to play a bunch of pop tunes, which is totally cool. For this is for somebody that wants to do their own music, but since we have these technologies, these chord recognition technologies and this cool DSP technology, wouldn't it be great if we took some of the cool things from that area and put it into a workstation that's designed to, you know, to uh, write your own music? So the only way to really do that is to get something that's close to what you want and then be able to change it instantly. So what we do is, I'll just go into category search and I've got, uh, in fact I'll play you when Stevie Wonder came into our, our booth when we released this. And he came in last year as well, he sang two tunes. Um, the other time he sang like a tune or two. And Stevie rarely does this. He rarely comes into someone's booth and sits around. He usually checks stuff out and leaves. And it's really funny because it's like watching a prophet because he's got an entourage of people that will just watch him walk by and they just instantly just follow him because he's so recognizable as Stevie Wonder that he might have some incredible meaning that he's gonna say but so he's got like 20 people that follow him in that are just saw him and he sits down um, and he plays you know a keyboard he usually leaves but he sat in our booth for about oh I don't know an hour and a half just playing this style right here and I know why because it's got like and he was playing like a little basic two chord thing This is one of those things as a keyboard player, you feel how so I'm oh, sorry. You ever watch guys try out amplifiers? If they're trying them out, they're pretty decent guitar players rather than just Marshall, turn it up to ten and just you know and hit it. They'll try out like a tube amp, especially you'll play it and play real soft. And then you'll kind of listen to it open up as you dig in.
And just that's such a cool sound. It's cool to feel it. So now when I play it with this guy, let's say this is the tune I'm working on. That's my A section, right? Okay, now there's different arpeggios, so there's, there's a little fill. Right? So here's the A section, right? So we got these two chords down. I'll play something. This will be my B section, maybe. Something like that. And then back to the A section, the two chords. Okay, so. So in the B section, it's going to have this groove, though. Okay, so that's all great. Now, if I were playing something like a portable keyboard, I would just play the song and sing it, and that would be it. But I want to record this and mess with it, because the bass line is fine, but it's just... In fact, I can solo it with these tracks. It, it, you know, it's a very mellow bass player. I want to do something maybe a little, little better than that. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out. So now, what I want to do is, I just want to record that. So, most keyboards before, if you wanted to record performances, you'd have to do all this kind of housekeeping to do it. And there's always a lot of like caveats to that. It's like, well, you're not going to get the same effects. Um, well, it's not exactly a one-to-one -one thing. You got to actually go into this mode in here and copy this over, and then you got to make sure that it's all like this, and then you got to record it, and then um, you may have to move this effect over to this thing, and then. You know, if you've ever done this, it's, a, it's like, I know this feeling. Okay, not with the XS. We made this absolutely the coolest way to do this. It's just hit record and pick where you want to go. Okay, I can either go to the song mode, which is linear, like a piece of string, it's this long, right? And a pattern mode is like a four measure section, an eight measure section. And so I want to go to the pattern mode because I'm thinking in this sort of sectional approach. So I'll go over here and I'll find a blank section or a blank pattern rather. I don't want to write over something I've already got in here. And um, I'll just, you know, I can actually do it a couple of different ways. I can uh, hit the key on start, so as soon as I hit a note, it'll start recording like now. Four measures, so I want to record. So it stops after I get the four measures. Okay, now. I wanted to do um, kind of the bridge part, right? So I still have it. I'm going to hit record. Right now I recorded it as section A. So I need to move it to section B. And that's just a matter of going to section and hitting B. So I got this guy in here and now I'll go. So there. Okay, now I was all in the, and it takes me back to the performance mode. So I'm still. Now I hit pattern, and, it, and I have right in front of me the four tracks. Here's the bridge, and it's exactly the same that I just played in. So I'll go, here's the A section, right? Now I'm going to go, here's the A section here. Okay. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to change the bass line. Just real simple. So, and I don't want to use this particular bass line. This one has an arpeggio, and it's the same one. I want to play my own in. And I like that one I used before, the active TRB, so I hit my category search button, which is right here. And I can now look at via categories right now. I'm in the electric bass category, so I'm going to move it up until I find the one I want. I can also set up a favorites bank, and I can just choose my favorites. Because you know, usually you only find like three basses in a keyboard that you really that really speak to you. You know, so you don't want to go through 800 bass sounds to get to the one you like. So I have a favorites bank. I can find that. And here it is, it's right here. 